Good morning, and today I'm going to tell you the story about when I tried to burn 10,000 calories before dinner. This is a very crazy challenge and a journey into the deepest, darkest trenches of my mind because we did this indoors on a trainer on a game called Zwift. But I'm going to jump straight into what am I doing, why am I doing it, and how is it getting done? This video gets a little deep in sections because I go super into my psychology and why I enjoy doing insane things like this so much. Before we jump into the video, I want to just thank Nomad a lot. They have supported me so much throughout this vlog series. They've got these bands that I've been using for my Apple Watch. It's lightweight, they're waterproof, they're super breathable. They have all sorts of crazy colors. Like I'm just rocking the incognito, but if you would like hunting orange, I'm rocking the all black. There's also blue. There's a white one that I think is really cool. The connection with Nomad here is that I'm using the Apple Watch to track my calorie burn, but also a heart rate strap and a power meter. We're very scientific about this. So let's jump straight into this. What am I doing? The main goal is to burn 10,000 calories in one ride. Now I've done this several times. So it's kind of a spoiler of like, this isn't a challenge that's new to me. I've already done this on Zwift earlier this year in January. Uh, I've done burnt, I've burned 10,000 calories out on the real road plenty of times. Uh, my two national championships for ultra distance all had 20,000 calorie burn rides in them. So I know what it feels like to burn this many calories. Burning 10,000 calories is extremely difficult to do, especially when we're indoors. So what are we on? We've got my time trial bike set up on a Saurus rocker plate that moves forward and backward and side to side. So it's extremely comfortable. So my balls don't literally evaporate while riding on a locked bike. My bike is connected to a trainer that uh, has a power meter in it and cadence and all sorts of stuff, but it also then broadcasts to a game called Zwift. Zwift is the number one virtual platform for virtual cycling, and everyone in the game is a real person on their bike in their garage or attic or wherever also riding. There's drafting, there's power-ups, there's different bikes, there's wheels, your weight makes a difference. It is very, very similar to actual real riding. So on top of the fact that, yes, I am locked in position, but I'm staring at this virtual world where I'm riding around on a flat course, and I actually was able to get into a big group that was rolling. Staying in a group is just like in the real world. It will help you so much go faster. And when you're clicking off miles, it's so much more motivating, especially when you're gonna be on the trainer for all day. Why, well, hello there. It's been one hour. If we consult the watch, we are at about 640 calories burned in an hour, which is just under our goal that it's gonna be over 14 hours. I don't really wanna do that. That means 14 hours of riding. We gotta pick up the pace a little bit, but again, we really gotta be careful that we don't blow ourselves up and then, then you can't go hard. Then you can't burn calories. Like say if I right now I did 1200 calories in an hour, I would then only be able to do 800 calories the next hour and probably 300 calories in the third hour. And then I wouldn't even be able to pedal in the fourth. So I need to like sort of just regroup and detach my consciousness from my physical form. Throw myself into a future timeline where I'm not doing this and I'm eating burgers and milkshakes with my family. All right, let's go. Sixteen hundred calories, two hours, twenty-two minutes. Uh, we were flying for the first two hours. I had an average speed of twenty-five miles an hour, and I know it's virtual, but like uh, I was probably going a little too hard, and I uh, wanted to back it down for just a second. I was really, I was losing the battle in the war against me. And during this, I'm going to be tracking every calorie I put in my mouth so I can understand the deficit that I'm in. All right, so we're gonna track the calories through macros. And then using the app Athletic with a Y, 
there's an app that goes on my watch and then I can see based on how many calories I've burned and then it also does how many calories I've consumed and it will show me if I'm in a surplus or a deficit. So the idea is to keep pretty much equal with calorie burn and calorie intake for about as long as I can. In past, my stomach locks up around six to 8,000. Yes, I do want to burn 10,000 calories, but I don't want to do that fasted. I need to try to bring in a ton, which leads me to why am I doing this? Now there's three different levels or, or advantages that I'm looking for. And this gets a little bit deep, but the first one is physical. The second one is mental. The third one is spiritual. So obviously the physical adaptations here is one, the amount of muscle contractions you're making is absolutely insanity because you're on the trainer for between 10 hours to 20 hours. It kind of depends, right? It's burning 10,000 calories isn't just a mile that you need to get to. If you go easier and lighter, it's gonna take you longer to get done. So the physical benefits here are the muscle contractions, obviously, right? Your endurance, your ability to sit there under that kind of stress, that physical stress, the lactic acid that's building, how do you buffer it? How do you manage it? Okay, cool. But the biggest physical thing about this is your gut and your ability to turn over this amount of calories and trying to balance this little burn, this little fire. If you can imagine you've got this, this fire campfire, do you just throw a log right on top of it? Snuff out the fire. Now you want to put kindling in just a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, because if you dump too much food and nutrition in your stomach, it will snuff out your gut biome. You literally don't have the microbes and, and the bacteria uh, to digest this food. And if you've never ridden past 12 hours, if you've never ridden past 20 hours, if you've never ridden past 30 hours, it's very hard for you to understand, but you could put food in you and nothing will happen. So it's this delicate art of just putting in a little bit and a little bit, but you, if you don't put in enough, now your fire dies out. So you're just like stoking this fire with food and, and energy constantly. So that's the physical side is, is yes, your muscles or whatever, but like mainly for me, it's about gut. Like I'm training my gut to be a garbage disposal. The second thing is the mental journey here. Okay. Physical or not, you're at work, whatever, you know, you're, you're trying to clean the kitchen. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. There's times in your life where your brain is telling you, stop doing this. Don't do this. Do something else. And you have to fight with yourself. It's me versus me. I've disrupted my whole pattern, my routine, my everything, and I am going to battle with myself. This takes tremendous amounts of practice to go to war with yourself because you are you. And so when you say stop, you're like, well, I'll listen to me because it's me, but it's not you. It's this other thing. And so learning how to split what is actually you and what is just your body's signals to say, hey, stop destroying yourself. And obviously this gets into a gray area of like, you need to listen when there's the bad signals, right? Like, are you injured? Are you actually killing yourself? Or is it just how, you know, weakness? And can I go farther? Can I push my body farther? And that gets very, very muddy uh, in, in like, where is that line? But the more that you battle yourself, the more you'll realize what your body is capable of. And when you get so exhausted and so tired that you can't hold up the, the mask anymore of like what you want to portray to the world, you all of a sudden open up your source code and, and then you actually can see inside your mind. And if you want to, you can change. For me, it's like my brain is a busy city honking horns and, and commotion and trains and planes and blah, 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 blah. and then as I keep doing this as I keep riding and I'm focusing on my legs and my heart rate and my sweat and my food and, and everything is just this primal activity of just keep going keep moving all of a sudden I journey out of that busy sh city mindset and then I'm just in like a garden and it's peaceful and there's butterflies 
It's so strange, but this is where I find my inner peace, my mental peace. It's, it's a level of meditation that I can achieve. And so to me, this isn't hard. This is easy. And I'm addicted to it. Uh, 4,500 calories burned. We're at a 2,500 calorie deficit. 400 grams of carbs, 71 grams of fat, 56 grams of protein. So that's good. getting rough we're at 10 hours 250 miles which is crazy the watch says we burned 7200 calories and brought in 4400 calories 700 grams of carbs 105 grams of protein 130 grams of fat 4400 total calories we are uh, at a 3100 calorie deficit so pretty good, like I'm pumped on that actually. All right, so you wanna know how much of a psychopath I am? I haven't listened to a single piece of music. I haven't really even watched anything. I am going hard enough to where all I can really think about is continuing to go hard. Like if I went easier, I'd get bored and I'd need to entertain myself. But right now I'm just been at 140 beats per minute for hours, which is, you can talk, you can think, but barely. But we're gonna stay in it, dude. Stay in it, bro. Stay in it. And so right now it's hard. It's difficult. But the alternative of having those thoughts come back into my head, I don't want them, dude. So I'm gonna keep riding. <laughs> Now the third thing is this transcendent ability to a higher frequency. So hippie, stay with me. When you put your body into a place of difficulty, it, it's like you're, you don't have enough energy to hold your consciousness to your physical form. And so then you start to ascend. I know that I'm just riding a bike in a, in a attic. So it's kind of like, why get so hippie about it? But unless you've been to this point or you've ridden and you've been physically active for hours and hours and hours and hours where your brain, you get to a wall and your brain goes, done, you're done, stop, turn around. And you don't turn around. There is this whole other existence on the other side. And so the third reason why I do this is to pull this consciousness of mine slightly above this physical form and then I'm just floating and it's so strange but it gives me the ability to sort of reevaluate who I am what I am why I am and it often turns out that it makes me a better person it, it highlights certain things that I've done or that I do that I don't like. The way that I treat my wife, I, I feel like comes from so many of these projects where I've gone outside it. And I've thought about how she exists. So not how I exist with her, it's how she exists with me. And then I'm able to see me through her eyes which is so very strange. And sometimes it is showing me like, oh, I don't like that. I, and that's not my perspective, but it's hers. And so I've gained a new level of perception 
because it's me and it's her. And then I somehow float up over here and I could see the whole thing. <laughs> There's always a moment during these projects where you just hit that wall and you don't want to do it anymore. And you cannot project yourself actually finishing it for whatever reason that didn't happen here. Uh, we've done a lot of riding recently. Okay. So I did that Everest, which was crazy. We did the three week training slow camp. You know, there's just been a lot of, uh, I'm pretty well rested. That's the other thing is that mentally I'm pretty locked in right now. And I'll just say that I never really felt, uh, in a position where I wasn't going to finish this. Now, towards the end, I did need to ramp up my burn rate. And I felt confident that I could start upping the energy output because that I knew I could get this done. Three hundred miles in under twelve hours. I mean, just barely. Uh, that's insane. So we're averaging twenty-five miles an hour. We are almost nine thousand calories. We're right there, about nine thousand calories. So a thousand calories left. Which, if we can just uncork it right now and just like dump all of our energy, we could probably get this done in the next hour. I was hesitant to go really hard and do a high burn rate. Because then what happens if you blow up and then you can't do anything? But now, we definitely got it. Like, we're done. It's the final stretch. It's the final countdown. So, right now, let's just... Yeah. So we got it done in 13 hours and 20 minutes, which is just about a, a, an hour, it's an hour and five minutes quicker than I did it last time. I would say that maybe because I put on a little extra weight and so my body just has a this more mass to obtain, but also I just did more power. I put out more energy. I started a little slower, I ended a little faster. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the macros here. So during the ride itself, I took in 5,000 calories 829 grams of carbs, 109 grams of protein, 140 grams of fat. That is during the ride. Never had any issues with my knees or my back or anything. Uh, I really tried to change up the way I was riding using my glutes and my quads and my back and my shoulders and my triceps, just to, like move that energy around different muscle groups. Again, I wanna say a huge thanks to Nomad for getting me dialed in with this Apple Watch and the sweet bands that are lightweight, waterproof, sweatproof, great sport bands. Um, this hyper orange is sick, the black. Nomad has allowed me to do some cool things this month that otherwise I would have probably had really a lot of difficulty justify to do. Check out my link in the description for Nomad if you have an Apple Watch. Well, if you have an iPhone, uh, whatever, they've got a, real, a lot of cool accessories for them. So look, just really appreciate Nomad for supporting me, dude. And now for the thing that I cannot wait for is the perfect dinner. And what is this perfect dinner? Well, it's a lot. This uh, vlog series this month has been a lot about food, um, and, and I hope that I'm kind of shining it in like a positive light. Like I definitely have a food problem, but it's always associated with just like really good times. Like it just brings me so much happiness. 
Um, so what do we have on tap for one of the biggest days that I've done? All right, so we have two vegan burgers and we've got this red cabbage, delicious. It's like a coleslaw, right? So on the burger, we have uh, the impossible patty. We have vegan bacon. We have butter leaf lettuce, uh, avocado. Um, then we have these homemade French fries that are so delicious. My wife crushed it and cauliflower with some uh, avocado on there. And then the whatever, however people say that, the resistance, whatever the French thing is, strawberry milkshake. This thing's probably got a thousand calories in it, just in this thing. A strawberry milkshake, it's so freaking good. This dinner, I have been thinking about it for 13 hours. Let's give it a little burger try, huh? Dude. And the, and the milkshake, like, bro, bro, but here's the cool thing is I've told you a lot about how food attaches to memories as a child. Vegan food was never a thing as a child. That was all comfort food and, and pork chops and spaghetti with meat and like whatever. So what this does is attaches me to a time with my family. And burgers are my son's favorite thing. These french fries, my wife and I learned how to cook these. Cauliflower is really only something I ever ate with my family. All of this I never ate with my mom or my grandma or anyone as a kid. So this, this reminds me of being home with my family after an adventure being connected with my wife and my kids. And so it's such a cool way to look at it as of where a lot of other food attaches me to being a child. This attaches me like now. And so then I love spending time with my family. I love eating with my wife and, you know, really taking in this experience. Really happy with the effort today. Uh, I only, I only, I never really took like a full break. Uh, I did have to use the restroom number two, uh, at one point. So that was like five minutes or something. But other than that, I took a handful of like 30 second breaks, uh, just to like shake out the legs and uh, pee in a bottle. So it was a lot, but man, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to go annihilate this whole thing and, uh, we'll catch you on the next one as always. VC. Yeah.